induction of labor what is induction of labor induction of labor is the attempt of beginning of labor in non-labor woman okay so in some conditions uh, we are obligated to uh, start uh, labor uh, in a woman who uh, don't uh, who doesn't have any uh, labor initiation okay she doesn't ha uh, has contractions she doesn't has dilation and defacement of cervix and so much, okay so what are these indications to induce labor to start when do we induce labor what are the indications of induction of labor the first one is post term latency okay so uh, wom women who reach term and don't have uh, labor contractions and defacement and dilation we uh, we have to induce labor in this case okay post term latency the second indication is for mother benefit for mother benefit and the third indication is for baby benefit what are things for mother benefit that ought us to induct induce labor first uh, of all is dm okay dm pet preeclampsia any bleeding because any bleeding uh, will cause uh, blood loss and uh, so less blood supply to placenta and calcification of the placenta insufficiency and that will affect the baby eventually okay so any bleeding is an indication for induction of labor dm preeclampsia decrease amniotic fluid decrease amniotic fluid okay is an indication of the induction of labor so we said first post term delivery and then for mother benefit and the third indication or a group of indications for baby benefit okay baby with IUGR we have to induce labor why because IUGR is like a case of malnutrition to baby okay so we have to induce labor to risk uh, risk your patient the baby okay in case of isomunization or isomunization we have to induce labor in cases of congenital anomalies okay so these are things for benefits of baby uh, that indicates us to start induction of labor IUGR isomerization and congenital anomalies okay what are the contraindications of induction of labor we talked about the indications so what are the contraindications of induction of labor actually contraindications of induction of labor are in general about surgeries uh, that we did to the uterus and in these surgeries we did increased risk of rupturing of the uterus after induction of labor so a scar of the uterus a scar of the uterus is a contraindication to induction of labor a previous two cesarean sections okay or one classical cesarean section okay so previous lower loop or normal cesarean sections or one upper loop or classical section and contraindication for induction of labor why because it's a risk factor for rupturing uh, of uterus okay this is the second contraindication the third contraindication is a previous ruptured uterus previous ruptured uterus the fourth is a placenta a previa major because placenta pre previa major is an obstruction uh, to the outlet of the baby so how could we induce a uh, delivery uh, with uh, w with an obstruction of the passage of the baby okay we can't so it's a contraindication a previous open myometomy okay the previous open myometomy actually is uh, like a, a cesarean section okay it's like an open cesarean section so it is a contraindication obstruction of labor successful repair of stress incontinence with tot tvt anything like that we we have to contraindicate 
uh, induction flavor in these cases okay so all of these contraindications or most of these contraindications are previous surgeries okay uh, some of them is a scar or placenta previa major or obstruction to the birth canal is a contraindication okay so we talked about indications contraindications and now we are moving to what to do what to do okay first of all we have to evaluate the situation how do we evaluate the situation we start by history physical examination history uh, we make sure of liability of gestational age uh, does really this woman uh, reach the term we have to make sure of the liability of gestational age how we have to ask about regular cycles uh, before pregnancy was it uh, were it regular cycles or no okay uh, we have to ask about oral contraceptive pills about lactation okay and we have to make sure that ultrasound to confirm the gestational age was done okay early ultrasound was done so and of course to ask about last minister period all these things to make sure the ability of the gestational age then what to do after making sure of liability of gestational age we have to take vital signs because we may have PET preeclampsia with an uh, indication for uh, induction of labor so we have to take vital signs and after taking vital signs we move to abdominal and PV examination the important thing actually about PV examination in the case of induction of labor is what we call Bishop score okay Bishop score is a score that show us uh, the favorability of the cervix uh, to deliver the baby okay so above five more than five bishop score means that we have a favorable uh, condition to induce labor okay or uh, the fetus is favorable to be delivered okay but below than five uh, bishop score means that it is not favorable to deliver the baby okay so what are the things we have to uh, count in, in bishop score uh, there are five things three of them is about uh, are about uh, cervix and two of them are about the baby okay the dilation of the cervix this is the first one about the cervix the effacement of the cervix the second one the station okay consistency of the cervix the third one okay the station of the baby and position of the baby so there are five things three of them about the cervix dilation effacement and consistency and two of them is, uh, are about the baby okay let's start with dilation if we have a zero dilation then we will have a zero score 1 to 2 dilation we have 1 score 3 to 4 centimeters dilation 2 5 to 6 3 bishop score okay so 0 is 0 1 with 1 2 with 1 and 3 with 2 4 with 2 and above 5 we have 3 bishop score okay so let let's assume that we have a 3 centimeter dilation of the cervix then the score will be 2 okay this is about the dilation what about effacement 0 to 30 percent effacement uh, opposite 0 uh, score in bishop okay 40 to 5 percent uh, opposite 1 and 60 to 70 percent 2 and 80 percent 3 let's assume that we have 65 effacement of the cervix then again we have two score okay this the station minus three zero minus two one so you start with a uh, minus three and in each, each step you uh, just add one minus three minus two minus one plus plus 
okay and add a score to bishop okay so minus three uh, zero minus two one minus one two uh, plus one and plus two uh, three okay so minus one uh, is okay minus two to change uh, is the station we have here so we add one consistency of the uh, cervix firm cervix zero medium cervix is more favorable than one soft cervix is the best then we have two score okay let's assume that we have medium uh, consistency of the cervix okay the position if it's posterior position zero uh, score middle position one and anterior two let's assume that we have posterior posterior position let's just add all these numbers one one two four and six so we have six bishop score six bishop score is above five then we have a favorable status of uh, delivery okay below five is not favorable so what to do if we have a non-favorable condition of delivery of bishop score we have to give the mother up to 10 days okay we have to wait the mother up to 10 days maximum 10 days but we have to evaluate and assess the patient every two to three days okay so we ask her to back to us after two to three days okay and reassist her if the patient score was above five then we induced labor if it is not above five below five then we have to wait another three days and so on so for till 10 days we induce labor after that okay now let's move to methods of indication induction of labor the first uh, thing we have to look at bishop score as we said okay above five bishop score is a favorable uh, case of induction of labor so what to do is artificial rupture of membrane we have just to rupture the membrane if the bishop score wa is above five okay we have to uh, artificially rupture the membrane when we rupture the membrane we will release a prostaglandins that will favor favor the uh, the situation to delivery okay and with artificial rupture of membrane we have to give oxytocin after uh, artificial rupturing of the membrane we have to give uh, oxytocin to induce contractions okay if uh, and we give uh, oxytocin in the case of no contractions okay but if, if we have a regular good contraction we don't give oxytocin okay before giving oxytocin we have to do INR INR okay uh, I just want to talk about the contraindications of uh, of oxytocin. There are some cases in which we don't give oxytocin, like asthma and glaucoma. These two are absolute contraindications of giving oxytocin. A scarring of the uterus is a relative contraindication of giving uh, oxytocin. If we have no rupturing of the membrane then we don't give oxytocin we have we just only give oxytocin uh, just our uh, after rupturing of the membrane okay okay this is the contraindications of uh, oxytocin what are the complications of uh, oxytocin what may happen after giving oxytocin uterine hyperstimulation is the thing first thing to to happen uterine distress and antidiuretic hormone okay uterine hyper stimulation and uterine stress and antidiuretic hormone okay these are the complications of the uh, oxytocin okay uh, what things uh, or what are the complications of artificial rupture movement let's think uh, of it as a logic <coughs> <coughs> sorry by logic okay by rupturing the membrane we uh, do a sudden release of the liker and the sudden release of the liker may cause a placenta, of course 
cord prolapse and may cause infection okay abrupt placenta cord prolapse and infection this is if patient score <coughs> is above 5 okay what if it is below 5 not favorable cervix we have or we may use mechanical and physiological ways of induction of labor like nipple stimulation like sexual intercourse like uh, applying a forest catheter or an enema okay and uh, we have to do or to give a prostaglandin E2 as you know we have prostaglandin E1 and prostaglandin E2 in the case of induction of labor we in most of cases we give a prostaglandin uh, E2 okay but in sometimes in some cases we give a prostaglandin E1 okay mesoprostol is a prostaglandin E1 uh, mostly mesoprostol is given in the cases of abortion okay sometimes is uh, sometimes I'm sorry sometimes we use it okay this is induction of labor I just want to review it uh, with you okay induction of labor uh, we talked about the indications and the contraindications a post-term delivery for mother and baby benefit contraindications uh, it's all about surgeries uh, what to do evaluate the situation vulnerability of gestational age the vital signs BV examination with bishop score and then we talked about the methods below five uh, above five favorable cases artificial option brain and below five a prostaglandin e2 and physiological and mechanical uh, maneuvers which are rare now to be used okay and we talked about the contraindications and the complications of oxy oxytocin asthma glaucoma and the complications of uterine hyperstimulation and trend stress thank you see you in the next video mm -hmm.